Uh, good morning to everyone. I'm Andre Girardi, PhD student at the University of Brescia. The paper that I wrote with Professor Barbara Badiani and Hamed Kebab analyzes the Piano Casa, literally translatable as house plan proposed by Italian government in 2009. Uh, this presentation will first introduce the house plan and the main phases of its elaboration and application. Then the national legislation related to the house plan will be further described and the stakeholder position will be reported. Afterward, the regional case studies will be introduced. And finally, a comparison will be, will be made between the different formulation of the regional house plans. The house plan aim to stimulate in investments by families and businesses in the construction and real estate sector affected by the finan financial crisis of 2008. This is a measure that disciplines a series of tools to facilitate intervention on the building heritage, also in derogation from local urban plans. This is not done through tax incentives or public investments, but by the granting of volumetric bonuses applied to the redevelopment of building stock. Moreover, the incentive is allowed only if the intervention are carried out with the improvement of the energy saving performance of the building or the use or green, or of green building techniques. Initially, in March 2009, a draft of a legislative decree was elaborate, elaborated. The draft was shared with the Conference of Regions and with the National Municipalities Association. And a discussion is initiated with the main stakeholders. Consequently, the national government decided to implement the house plan through the issuing of regional laws so that the regions could decline the requirement of the house plan in the area of competence. The first house plan ends in 2011 and uh, after um, 18 months of validity, the addition of private owners at national level was very limited. And in the same year, the government reproposes the house plan with law 106 of 2011. This was the last stage of action at the national level. The regional governments have to issue a last law, and since then, the evolution of the house plan depends on the regional decisions. Today, in 15 cases out of 21 regions and autonomous provinces present in Italy, the house plan is still active. For a better understanding of the type of uh, intervention promoted by the house plan, here you can see an example of a building before and after the application of the house plan. Let's now see in more detail the volumetric bonuses provided by the national legislation. The state region agreement excludes properties in violation of building regulation and specify the minimum percentage of volumetric increase that are 20% for expansion intervention of single family buildings or volume not exceeding 1000 cubic meters and 35% for demolition and reconstruction of all kinds of residential buildings. The law 106 of 2011 changed these percentages and expands the application possibilities, trying to make the tool more attractive. Furthermore, in the event of inertia of the regions in the updating their house plan, these volumetric bonuses could be applied with a very simple decision of the local administrations. I remind you that these are minimum parameters, so regional law can increase them and as we will see later, in several cases, they've done so. Okay, now moving uh, on to the stakeholder position. We see that the measure of uh, national government was initially challenged by environmental associations, by urban planners, and by most of the regional governments and municipalities. In summary, the plan is considered the result of an urban deregulation policy that could lead to an intensive soil sealing of the territory, a worsening of the architectural quality, and an enrichment of speculators. Conversely, the professional associations and the builders are in favor as they evidently see excellent profit opportunities. However, the arguments used by the opponents are not always convincing. In fact, the sticking point appears to be the loss of public control over private initiative. Municipal administration and regional government change their opinion on the house plan when it is decided that they can have a certain degree of decision-making power on the modalities of application of the tool. For making consideration on the effectiveness 
of ancient tools based on volumetric bonuses and in particular on their relationship with planning objectives, five case studies are explored. These case studies, according to the authors, are representative of the different ways of disciplining and applying the house plan. The case studies are made up of the regions Emilia Romagna, Lazio, Lombardy, Sardinia, and Veneto. The comparison was deepened using the minutes of the regional council, the regional information documents, and article on the subject available online in periodicals or association websites. Before starting the description of the result of the analysis of the case studies, it may be useful to introduce a territorial framework of the selected regions. Lombardy, Veneto, and Emilia Romagna are located in Northern Italy, in an area strongly polarized by the presence of Milan and crossed by two infrastructural corridors. The urban system is characterized by medium-sized cities located in the Po Valley area, which are very widespread production component and very congested tourist areas, such as Lombard Lakes. In Lazio, in central Italy, there is Rome and other medium-sized cities. Finally, Sardinia, one of the two main Italian islands, presents cost with landscape values and is characterized by a urban system strongly conditioned by the tourism sector and by a system of medium-sized urban center. An evaluation of the results of application of the house plan in the case studies was conducted through the processing of data of building permits from um, 2006 to 2019. Since 2006, in all Italy, there has been a sharp decrease in building permits, except for permits issued for residential extension, displayed in the graph on the slide. This graph shows in some regions a change in trend that is considered by analysts as, as a damping effect of the house plan on the fall in investment in residential real estate. Now, holding this graph in the background, I will illustrate the results of the analysis of the case studies. First of all, Emilia Romagna. In this case, the regional government considered the house plan too oriented to speculative interest. Consequently, the region has prepared a single house plan, no longer extended, without departing from the contents of the state region agreements. Moreover, skepticism toward the house plan and the tendency to limit its area of application has been shared with the municipalities and provinces. Consequently, in the 18 month of validity of the plan, just over 100 applications were submitted. And in the period analyzed, the permits for expansion always decreased. However, in 2011, there is a small recovery, and after 2011, the decrease is less rapid, following a trend that can be seen more markedly in other regions. This may suggest the existence of a dumping effect partially unrelated to the house plan. Lombardy. The regional government issued a first house plan in 2009 with minor changes from the contents of the state region agreement. In the regional council, contrasting position emerged, focuses on the economic aspect or on the environmental one. The scarce utilization of the house plan seems to justify the position of who believes this tool cannot succeed if the most sensitive areas are preserved. After, the, to, after 20 months, only 350 applications were submitted. In the same period, 23,000 were submitted in Veneto. However, Lombardy region reproposes the house plan in 2012 with small increases in the bonuses percentage and with an expansion of the intended use for which they can be granted. Even with this formulation, the Lombardy house plan is not very successful. The downward trend in the index of building permit continues to decrease until 2019. The regional council is convinced that the poor results are linked to the opposition of most of the municipality. Uh, therefore, the region prefer not to repeat the house plan. Now the case of Lazio. In uh, 2009, the regional government expressed its negative opinion on the national house plan. So, so that uh, the, the first uh, law is uh, approved with uh, several limitations in the application. Consequently, be between 2009 and 2011, the index of building permits continued to decline. In 2011, the change of political direction 
of the regional government after the election led to reproposing the house plan without the previous limitation, uh, with increased bonuses and the possibility of application in areas of landscape protection. However, this, this last change is in contrast with the state region agreement and the national government contest the, the regional law. The region only adapt after 2014 election, which brought back to the majority the political forces hostile to the House Plan in 2009. However, the new government relaunches the House Plan in the less restrictive form of 2011. In this phase, there is a peak in permits in 2017, even higher than that recording during the real estate boom of 2006. The effect of these permissive choices can be seen, especially in the delicate skyline of Rome, where buildings from the early 20th century have also been touched. Following this episode, committees of citizens, associations, and exponents of the cultural world have begun to move against the house plan. Therefore, the regional government decides to put a stop to the, to the house plan. Consequently, since 2018, the number of building permits has been greatly reduced, almost reaching the level of Lombardy and Emilia Romagna. Sardinia. The first version of the house plan follows the parameter indicated by national government, and the regulation remains unchanged even in the subsequent free version of the law. The regional government considered the house plan an extremely effective tool for economic revitalization in the construction sector especially for residential construction. Indeed, after 2010, the number of permits increases. The success of the tool is such as to convince the regional government to propose a new version in 2021 to counter the effect of the, of the pandemic crisis. Moreover, in this latest version, there is an increase in the volumetric bonuses granted and uh, an expansion of the areas of application. In particular, the law extended the application to areas of landscape protection, to properties in, viol in violation of, of building code, and to buildings located in historic centers. Furthermore, the decision-making margin of the municipalities is reduced. Therefore, the national government contested the law in almost all its articles. And at, at the moment, the procedure is still in progress. And uh, for last, Veneto. The government of the Veneto region is the most convinced of the economic potential offered by the house plan. In fact, already in March 2009, the Veneto government anticipated the national government approving a law, a law that allowed expansions up to a limit of 20%. Moreover, in this territory, the house plan is also welcomed by the municipalities. With subsequent laws, the region further increased the volumetric bonuses. The application of the house plan in Veneto is wide. Up to the year 2018, more than 100,000 permits have been issued. Furthermore, the graph shows a stable trend in the expansion permit up to 2019. The regional councillor for the territory in 2014 expressed a very clear position on the role of urban planning in relaunching the economy. Planning is a means by which to grasp the demands of the market and ensure social welfare. Economic advantage of real estate intervention must be ensured even when pursuing environmental protection objectives. So, in, in the regional law 14 of 2017, the incentive tool is applied by linking it to a regional strategy of urban reuse a containment of land consumption. In this law, the maximum volumetric bonuses can be further increased up to 60-100% through the demolition of incongruous artifacts identified by the municipalities and the natural restoration of the soil. From the comparison of the case studies, we can say that the choice of the state to introduce a compulsory volumetric incentive tool created conflict with local authorities, which dissolved when an active role was ensured for local authorities in the implementation of the house plan. A dampening effect 
on the recession of real estate is suggested by the fact that in case where the house plan application is low, as Emilia Romagna and Lombardy, the number of permits continues to decline. But a low recovery can be seen also in Emilia Romagna, suggesting other dampering effects, uh, other dampering factors. If we measure the success in terms of adhesion by private individuals, the region with the greatest success is Veneto, followed by Lazio and Sardinia. The regional law with more adhesion was supported both by regional government and by the municipalities, and are united by the fact that they allowed a great, the, the greatest volumetric bonuses, up to 100% in the case of Veneto, and the widest possibilities of application including areas of landscape protection, as in the case of Lazio and more recently, Sardinia. The regions, uh, the regions of Sardinia, Lazio and Veneto are also those in which major forcing has been attempted with respect to the national setting of the house plan, especially to facilitate application in attractive areas for the market. In fact, in all cases, the law has been subject of appeals by the national government, which have made the uh, application very controversial, controversial and discussed. In conclusion, it can be argued that uh, incentive tools of this type can be a valid economic aid in the first year immediately following a crisis in the real estate, but they are not able to revive the sector so that uh, it can sustain itself autonomously once uh, the effect of the tool are exhausted. Furthermore, their use entails high risk for urban quality and landscape protection. Moreover, it's very difficult to believe that an incentive tool of this type can be applied effectively to uh, implement environmental sustainability policy. Thank you for your attention.